Welcome to Obscurities. I'm Debbie Rashawn. It was a cold, dark November night in 1930 when a fur trapper, Joe LaBelle, arrived in a small Inuit village. A village on the banks of Lake Anjakuni, where, like many Inuit communities at the time, took place in a thriving European fur trading operation. As the chilled fur trader approached the lake village, a strange silence met him. The only sound was the howling of the wind. There were no lights, no fires burning in the homes. It was as if the village had been abandoned. The trapper searched the homes and found them empty. As he began to investigate and look further into the village, he realized something was very wrong. There were no signs of struggle, no evidence that anything violent had happened. Tents were still pitched with personal items of value present. LaBelle even found shirts which still had the sewing needles stuck into the fabric, while rifles lay lonely under parkas. It was as if the villagers had simply vanished into thin air. As LaBelle explored the camp further, he heard a rustling sound beneath a dark tent near the edge of the lake. He moved closer to the opposite side of the tent and discovered two still-living husky dogs. Just beyond the husky dogs lay seven people, bodies exposed to the elements, with bodies that visibly looked malnourished and all looking to have starved to death. LaBelle continued to explore the camp. The two dogs left their nestled resting places and followed him as he continued. It's said that the dogs were the only living creatures in the village and may have been the reason why the seven Inuit people were found. The dogs had been feeding off the bodies of their former owners. LaBelle eventually made his way back to the main part of the village where he found a small hunting knife with human flesh still clinging to it. The knife was covered in blood, and upon further inspection, LaBelle determined that someone had used it to kill a seal. The small group of people may have resorted to cannibalism to survive, but we'll never know for sure. Joe LaBelle hiked on to find the closest telegraph office and quickly reported his findings to the Canadian Mounted Police. They began investigating the disappearance of the small Inuits village without ever concluding their investigation. Their investigation took testimony from a trapper named Armand Laurent and his two sons. When questioned, they said they saw a large cylindrical object that transformed into a bullet shape before heading toward the water. At the village, the RCMP found the kayak still sitting on the beach. Meals hung over long-dead cooking fires and frozen bodies of the villagers' dogs. They also found that every grave in the burial ground had been opened and emptied. The headstones had been neatly stacked in piles on either side of the graves, ruling out animals as the culprits. The even stranger thing was that the graves themselves appeared to have been dug up from underneath as if the bodies had been pulled up through the ground. The RCMP eventually concluded that the Inuit people had been missing for about eight weeks before LaBelle's arrival. But they never found an answer as to why the entire settlement had abandoned the location. We may never know what happened to the small Inuit village on that cold November night in 1930. Was it a case of mysterious cannibalism and hunger that drove the inhabitants out? An alien abduction? Or something more sinister? Or was it purely a fictional tale exaggerated by the somewhat vast mystery and intrigue of the Inuit villages of the time? There are a number of issues with the Joe LaBelle account of the disappearing Inuit village, like that of Lake Anjakuni being so far inland that many remnants of seals were unlikely. 
LaBelle also described this as a permanent community, a friendly little Eskimo village of about 30 inhabitants that he'd known for many years. A statement from the Mounted Police says a village with such a large population would not have existed in such a remote area of the Northwest Territories. While today there's no physical remains to be found of a once existing village located on the banks of the Canadian Lake. On January 17, 1931, Cortland Starnes, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Commissioner, released an investigation of the event undertaken by Sergeant J. Nelson. While speaking to local traders, Nelson learned that Joe LaBelle indeed was a real person, but was known only to perform his work in northern Manitoba. He also found that the author's photograph that he included was an older photograph taken directly from the RCMP's archives. Since Nelson found that nobody ever knew of the existence of a village on Lake Anjakuni, he deemed the story a sensationalized hoax. In the April 1977 edition of Fate magazine, a reader wrote in to dispute the hoax conclusion. This reader was Betty Hill, who was at the time the most famous self-described alien abductee on Earth and the subject of the 1966 book, The Interrupted Journey, Two Lost Hours Aboard a Flying Saucer. Betty claimed that while on a ferry ride with her husband Barney at the Bay of Fundy, they met a Captain Larson who, as a Mountie, had spent nine years investigating the mystery of the vanishing village at Anjakuni Lake. In his opinion, wrote Betty, the villagers had all been abducted by UFOs. The article in Fate magazine was co-written by Stanton Friedman, the world's most famous ufologist. In it, he wrote that there is abundant evidence that something unusual happened. In support of their case, Betty and Stanton pointed to the fact that several police officers and others had seen the same cylindrical object that Laurent described. They also noted that people who lived somewhat close to the lake had long heard stories from the Inuits about mysterious lights in the sky. While the truth of what happened to the small Inuit village at Lake Anjakuni, and if it ever did exist, remains a mystery, it will undoubtedly continue to captivate people from all over the world. Whether it was a case of alien abduction, straight-up cannibalism, or another kind of obscurity, we may never know.